The following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, August 29th, 2023, featuring Alex Miletus of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Hello and welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our commentator, Alex Miletus of Bianco Research. Welcome, Alex. Thanks for having me. Today, Alex will give an update on zero DTE or zero days to expiration options. And Alex, since we last spoke on this topic, zero DTE options have been exploding in popularity. What's going on with zero DTE nearly a year after they became popular? Yeah, so zero days, zero DTE or zero days to expiration options now make up over half of all options volume for the S&P 500. The risks stemming from these short-term options are still relatively unknown nearly a year after the volume started to explode. So this first chart that we're gonna look at here comes from Nomura. And this chart breaks down the S&P 500 options volume by expiration. And the red there, you can see that big jump in volume by the end of 2022, and that's zero DTE. And as of August 10th, zero DTE as a percentage of all S&P volume reached over 55%. Now, Spot Gamma, a different, uh, a different group analyzing these options flows, looks at this from a different angle. So if we move on to the next chart here, you're gonna see that the white line on the chart at that bottom, on the bottom represents the S&P 500's price movement. The purple line represents total S&P options volume, and then the teal or blue colored line uh, represents zero DTE volume. So the important thing to note on this chart here is that total options volume flow and zero DTE flow don't diverge intraday until pretty much the very last trading hours of the day. In other words, the majority of options volume flow during the day is explained by zero DTE trading. It's just another confirmation of that 55% mark. These zero DTE options are dominating the market. Can you remind us how zero DTE options work? Yeah, sure. So before you kind of understand the market impacts and importance of zero DTE, it's really important to understand the mechanics behind how these options work. Before, instead of going into detailed vocab and all these different terms, it, it's better to just to give you an example. So imagine a trader purchases 100 put options on SPY. These contracts have a delta of 50. Now remember, the delta is the sensitivity of an options price to the change in the underlying security. So the trader now holds a long position in these puts, and the market maker has to take the other side to short 100 puts. Because market makers, they have to remain neutral, they need to hedge their positions uh, by selling 50 shares per 100 puts or 5,000 shares of the underlying security with that 100x options multiplier. This is known as a delta hedge for market makers and it occurs just at initiation. Now, where it gets interesting is as the underlying stock moves, market makers must adjust their hedge. Now, if the stock moves higher, dealers start to buy back those shorts. Conversely, if the stock starts to turn lower, the dealer must add to their short position, right? This is gamma hedging, an example of a negative gamma from the dealer's perspective. And what this means is when a dealer has negative gamma, they need to chase the market, meaning as the market goes lower, they continue to short more shares to remain neutral against that original trade. This obviously increases volatility, and the possibility of market dislocations. Conversely, when a dealer has the positive gamma that we talked about earlier, the, they trade against the market, adding shorts as the market moves higher. This subdues volatility and keeps the markets in a tighter trading range. Now, all of this is to say that the option market, the option market specifically around zero DTE is really a game of ping pong between traders and dealers. As volume increases, dealers need to adjust their positioning more frequently to create the potential, to, to minimize the potential for structural risk. And structural risk is often associated with these extreme dealer positionings. So this increasing volume of zero DTE has everyone keeping a close eye on these dealer positionings. 
How is this showing up in the markets? Great, so the significant increase in zero DTE volume has placed, like I said, significant risk on these market makers to stay neutral intraday, not even close to close. So we're calling from our previous commentary earlier in the year on zero DTE. These options are likely and extremely, extremely likely to increase intraday volatility while diminishing longer term volatility. For example, 30 day vol measured by the VIX index. While a scenario, while a doomsday scenario around zero DTE has yet to manifest, the theoretical field remains that if zero DTE traders push market makers into forced selling uh, in a negative gamma position, algorithmic or rules-based traders or investment strategies might be forced to sell into the declining market and create extreme moves in a very short time frame. Now, why would this happen? Imagine an event similar to Silicon Valley Bank back in March. An intraday bank failure led to failure led to panic selling across markets, but mostly in the in regional bank names. Now, one can imagine a cascading effect here on of, from zero DTE. You tra traders are short a or have puts on the S&P. These bank stocks decline, and this negative gamma cascading effect kind of takes the whole market down with it. That's the big fear with zero DT. Now, has this happened or could it happen? It could, but will it? That's relatively unknown still. Now, what we're getting at here is that the explosion of volume in zero DT has transformed risk from, an, from a definable and measurable statistic to an obscure and hard to measure part, part of the market or phenomena. Now, it's important to understand all these risks, but the rise of zero DTE itself does not indicate any type of market disaster is on the horizon. It does, however, transform where the risk lies. Like in our example, a catalyst takes, uh, a catalyst combined with zero DTE creates a market panic or a market uh, dislocation. This is a potential risk of zero DTE. Alex, thank you for your thoughts today and thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions on Arbor Research, Bianco Research, or Arbor Data Science, you can contact us by emailing Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks everyone and have a great day. Thank you.